Good evening, Mushimiwa. Good to have you. Good evening, Linda. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for finding time. Yeah, I'm happy to have you too. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. All right. And anytime I get an opportunity to discuss about Ketwist, I always feel honored. Mm -hmm. So I really feel honored to be here. Right. Allow me to say hi to my people. Yes. Hope we are good. And uh, we are here. Let's move together. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And I uh, mean, by the time we're winding up this show, we'll have known whether indeed you people are good or not based on the phone calls that we'll be getting. The numbers rolling down on your screen. The SMS short code is also on your screen. Keep those SMSs sending, uh, coming in and we get to ask Moshimiwa those candid questions in regards to the development of the people of Kitui at large and now narrowing down to his constituency. Moshimiwa, key within your docket, as always we say, we go straight to the point, is matters education. At this point, uh, the country at large is discussing education, how we get our students back to school, how we get our infrastructures in order, how we get land for some of the students, I mean, some of the schools, how we get to cushion the private schools, and a couple of other things that are coming on board, bursaries. Parents are worried about the aspect of school fees. At this point of COVID-19, what has been done within your very own respective constituency, which sits in your docket, uh, to address the matter of the discrepancies we witness on matters education today? Uh, first and foremost is to appreciate the opportunity. And uh, we, I totally agree that of the issues you've said, the sectors that an elected member of parliament would handle the function from the national government. Mm -hmm. But coming from a very marginalized constituency, I, I never, I never only restrict myself to the few national government functions. Mm -hmm. So any matter development in Kitui East, any challenge within Kitui East, mm -hmm. I always take it as my job because when you are elected, uh, that very poor mother there, they, 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 they have sent you not only to the things you are supposed to do within your docket, but also to another uh, service they will need because yeah. they can't go. You are the one to go mm -hmm. out there. Uh, having said that, um, I went to the election on a platform of uh, liberating my people. Yes. Because uh, we, we've been marginalized for long. It's a very rural constituency. Mm -hmm. We bought at Tana River. And, uh, but we have a constituency which has a rift, as in we, we, we are two in one. Mm -hmm. we, we, my constituency starts away from Ketui Town, where we have the county commissioner. Yep. Then, uh, 140 kilometers to Tana River. Mm -hmm. And uh, you find the side bordering Tana River is uh, development is skewed towards the, where the county commissioner is in Kitui Town. You find electricity, you find tarmac roads, you find uh, level five hospital, yeah. all those uh, important services. You find good schools, school buses, and all that. But when you go to the other rift, yeah, it's a challenge all over. Mm -hmm. uh, the transition from primary to secondary yeah. was around 20%. Okay. You know? The class I sat for class 8, the, when I did my KCSE, uh, we were like 8 students and only 2 of us proceeded to Form 1. Okay. So how, how do you explain that? So when I came in, first I had to analyze uh, how the constituency is and the funds available for me. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the other issues outside where I have been provided to, to serve yeah. by CDF. And uh, I organized myself on how to approach all these things. One of the things which was very clear I have to get right is bridging this gap, the transition mm -hmm. from class eight to, to form four, yeah. uh, to, to form one. To, yeah. And this was a time where the government was so much to 100% transition. Okay. And uh, so I looked at poverty is one of the reasons our people, our, our parents could not take kids to form one. Mm -hmm. Availability of schools was also another challenge. And the government, remember my Kibaki government had this uh, free secondary education mm -hmm. in uh, day secondary schools. Right. And in my constituency, yeah, it's not densely populated, it's sparsely, but uh, it's all over. People have settled, settled all over. Yeah. So you find uh, a village like here, the nearest secondary school is a boarding secondary school. It's around 15 kilometers from here. Yeah. And no other school. The, the, the boarding secondary school is not affordable to parents around it. Mm -hmm. So how, how would we push parents to tell them to take kids to form one? Yeah. Then you find the nearest day school is like 20 kilometers mm -hmm. from this village. 
And so parents will be, the parents who are very willing and who could try hard to get their kid to form one, yeah. they would take uh, the kids and uh, board a, a house, house. Uh -huh. yeah, in uh, the nearest town. Sorry. Then the kid will be waking up from this town to go to the school and the kid is left there as though the kid is a grown up who is working. Oh, so we are talking about that point when you got to power? That time when, when I got to power. Has, so uh, has to, anything been done, yes? Yes, to bridge that. Up to now, for the last three years, I've managed to open 24 new secondary schools. Okay. 24 new day secondary schools. Right. 100% uh, through CDF. Okay. From registration, I've given money through bursaries, enabled the teachers to register their school. You need around 70,000 yeah. to get a school registered fully. Then construction of the classrooms. Parents could not afford to construct a primary school class, the, the primary school and the secondary school at the same mm -hmm. time. So I had to go into giving a lot of money to the 24 secondary schools right. to do a form one class, a form two class, washrooms for both, uh, toilets basically for both girls and boys, then the teachers, academy block. We're talking about permanent structures. Permanent structures. Okay. We are not doing anything. Uh, even our engineers, you know, we have that BQ, the, the bill of quantities from the energy CDF. Yeah. So you, you can't build a same permanent structure through CDF. So we've gone for that. So one of my biggest achievements, and it was within my, my campaign in Manifesto, is to get free secondary education closer to every village. Mm -hmm. So we managed to get that through opening over the 24 and building the 24 new secondary schools. What much is being done towards ensuring that that also is taken to another level? Because I would want to assume that indeed we have very many students and such is the case across the country that the number of schools today are going lower and that's the reason why we are worried about the fact that after mm -hmm. COVID lots of private schools will have closed down and the question is just how many of government schools are able to sustain all the students that we have? But you know with the day secondary schools yes. it's it's more of a primary school, right. where kids will only pay for food. And a parent may decide, mm -hmm. my, my kid will survive throughout the day. Most of our kids, they survive without food. Yeah. They love breakfast mm -hmm. at home. What, what can be done to breed the poverty levels that are there? That's now a serious discussion we, we need to get into. Yeah. We are doing something about it, but I, I'll come to that after this. So with this schools, we managed to bridge the 100% transition. Yeah. We've given bursary to all the kids in day secondary schools. They can confidently say that it's, it's a fair process because most of the people who access bursaries argue that sometimes it's very hectic. Some of them actually do not access bursaries at all. Um, we have been having a conversation of bursaries for sale that you have to give out something for you to get these bursaries. That's the other thing. I talked about liberating my people. Yes. Before, we used to have this challenge of uh, getting bursaries. As in, you, you have to know somebody, then know somebody for your kid, for your kid to, to get bursary. Mm. And imagine a poor parent knows nobody. Uh, a parent who is uh, taking their kid to that day school knows nobody. Yeah. So we made, uh, I'm doing uh, the bursary allocation in two, two from One is the bursary for everyone. We we have 47 sub-locations where we have our sand chiefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have each sub-location as a bursary committee where the sand chief is a member mm -hmm. and a pastor is a member. Then we have the chair and the other committee members. Okay. So based on the population of each uh, sub-location and uh, the amount we have, like last financial year, we had 47 million mm -hmm. of uh, bursary. So we gave each sub-location yeah. Uh, its own allocation. Let's say sublocation A gets 400,000 mm -hmm. for bursary. It is upon the, 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 committee, the committee to call a baraza, an open baraza, yeah. for everybody to be there. Then we agree on who we are going to give. Mm -hmm. Then uh, establish a list of those who are the kids you've given mm -hmm. with the reasons you thought kid A should get 9,000 and kid B get 3,000. Mm -hmm. Then number two, I print these, uh, you know, you, you need uh, to apply the bursary through yeah. an official form, right. it's a government form. So we print enough forms to take to the parents. So I'm um, in this application, I tell them you have, have a million for your bursary and these are forms enough for each and every parent. Okay. So parents collect enough, for, get your form, go home, fill, return. Then on this date, we'll have an open baraza mm -hmm. where the assistant chief will be there and the chairman you've chosen will be there mm -hmm. so that you can allocate. Mm -hmm. You allocate yeah. 
the forms and the list is re a copy is returned to the CDF office. Yeah. When the checks are done in the CDF office, I check the list which came from the chief and the checks. And I call my own baraza right. at the same sublocation mm -hmm. where I will tell the chief, use, using your list, read the kids and how you allocated the bursaries to them. Okay. So the kid will be in my own my number one list is Mutua Moli. 9,000. This is the check from Ruamoli, where is the okay. parent? Mm -hmm. so, so we go through until the last parent, the last check. Okay, Mushimiwa, um, uh, briefly away from your docket, and that is on matters electricity. At this point of COVID-19, we realize that, uh, you know, the world paints a picture of what the world will be like in uh, the near future, especially on matters technology. And uh, we've seen how we started, you know, sort of having troubles at that point when, of course, we had to close down schools and some of the students had to access, uh, you know, education or studies or, you know, what it is that they would want to learn from school via, you know, the internet, virtual mm -hmm. learning and all that, which is not working pretty well. But then again, I'm certain that this is a conversation that everyone is having in their own special space. Uh, we are looking at a constituency that does not have a proper aspect of electrification, you know, across these different parts. We're also looking at a constituency that is derived of a network, proper network for that matter. If you look at that scenario and you have the interest of making the best of education, what does it make you feel and what is being done towards working towards, you know, rural electri electrification of uh, this particular region and importantly, you know, strengthening of the network? You know, talking of Kitui East, and uh, some of these things are, uh, in not our, are not in our world. Yes. As in, you, you can't discuss virtual education in Kitui East. Because is 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 some is reason you mentioned and others will not. But are we not it. headed there? I, I, there's a challenge. Yes. Because the reasons are, as you've said, electricity. Most of the areas are not covered. We are trying on that. Network coverage, we are also trying on that. Mm -hmm. But this virtual education thing is based on a platform, mm -hmm. a laptop, a, a smartphone. Yes. Our parents cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. As in, you, you find 70% of our households, nobody works. Mm -hmm. Nobody can give 1,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. So to get a, a smartphone, to get uh, an iPad to get a laptop is quite a challenge. No blueprint to us that because leadership is about you know looking at the future, looking at what is likely to happen in 2030, vision, what would, and everything. Is there no discussion that is revolving around this? You know, we had the, the Jubilee government coming in power in 2013 saying that they would provide um, mm. iPads yes. to, to students, to pupils in all the schools. And that never happened. And this is not avoidable by our parents. And uh, so it's something we have to be truthful mm -hmm. to ourselves where we are. And not unless the government comes in to provide these gadgets, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just a pipe dream to, well, to our it, people, basically. It, well. it's, it's a, the least you can buy a smartphone with a smartphone that can hold that uh, platform for virtual uh, class mm -hmm. is around 3K. Okay. That's basically not affordable, nowhere close to our parents. But at least you can guarantee your people that electricity or electrification of this particular region is something they can dream about? By the time I was elected, we were at 23% uh, electricity connectivity. Yes. Now we are at 65% okay. electricity Good. connectivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have contracts going on, some, so, so, some that, that's uh, villages. You mm -hmm. know, in electricity, there are two ways. Eh? There is maximization of a meter. You find you have a meter here. You, you have a transformer here, and the families around have not got electricity. So you need to, to, to maximize on the transformer and get many families connected. Mm -hmm. Then there is where you find a village uh, 20 kilometers from here has no electricity lines. So there's pulling the lines up to there. Mm -hmm. So we are approaching it both ways. We, we, we are trying to get Kenya Power come in and Rare come in to connect the villages. Then there's also Rare coming in to provide more transformers and connect, give connectivity to the households. Mm -hmm schools uh, and other facilities like hospitals. Mm -hmm. Just the other day we had uh, our level 4 hospital in Zombe connected mm -hmm. because uh, this is a place, I, I told you, we, we are talking of 170 kilometers mm -hmm. of, of uh, a diameter. Yes. So the, 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 farthest, the farthest world had people had to be driven 170 kilometers yes. for a minor surgery. Imagine somebody was on a border border 
go to an accident, goat is uh, and fractured, yes. they need to be x-rayed and get uh, some plaster or whatever. They have to be driven this 170 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So we had to get a level forced to midway. Then the, the, the obstacle was there. We have all these uh, mini labs. We have the x-ray machine, but we are not connected. Yeah. So we fought for the last three years. Is only this month when we managed to secure connectivity to that hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the mini lab is, the, the mini lab is, uh, and the mini theater is being um, I, I operationalized. Okay. So, so when you talk of challenges coming out of uh, lack of connectivity to the grid, mm -hmm. yeah, is, is both through education, health sector, and also in business. Okay. I, imagine the young guys who are there, uh, and they would want to engage in this kind of businesses, welding, young ladies in uh, butte and uh, whatever Not and able so to do this that. all needs electricity connectivity mm -hmm. so it's affecting the education sector is affecting uh, the private sector in terms of business it's affecting the health sector because imagine as in most of the activities in uh, an hospital in a dispensary would require, would require to be yeah. powered mm -hmm. for for just minor processes right and without that it's a challenge also mm -hmm. but i appreciate because since independence, 56 years ago, yeah. from independence, we were at 23%. And within three years, we are now Managed at 65. 65. Yes. Okay. Well, we might have to go a little bit fast uh, because we have mm -hmm. so much to touch on and time is not on our side. And when you speak about what it is that electricity or lack of electricity uh, you know, affects, then you cannot fail to address the aspect of security. Security sits in your docket. You are a security specialist for that matter. And I'd want to come in and ask just how best is the aspect of insecurity? I uh, you know, and I mean, how has it been addressed at this particular point? Would you confidently say that uh, insecurity is a game of the past or is a game that is not in existence in your constituency, briefly? Yeah, uh, a third of my, two thirds of my constituency has the normal insecurity cases, mm. just the very normal which are all over in the country. Yeah. And uh, that is addressed by just yeah. equipping the police, having electricity, having roads, having the rest. Mm -hmm. But I had a third of my, my, my constituency having these, uh, <coughs> these uh, you, you've heard of the shifters, yes. you know? We have these uh, Somali... And in fact, I, that was my next question, because yeah. the animosity that is there between, yes, your constituents, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, in, you know, these herders that come from uh, Somali and all that, and yes. it's a problem that has been in existence. Have you engaged the Interior Ministry on this, and how far has this, or is this in terms of resolving it? This is something I dived into immediately after I was elected. Yeah. I had to go through there and uh, get to know the, the topography of, of the area and the real challenge of the ground. Mm -hmm. And it was worse, as in people were sleeping in the bush, you can't sleep in your home. People are like, you can't fetch water in the nearest bowl because thousands and thousands of camels are queuing to get water and uh, these guys are harmed. You are there in the middle of nowhere. No police presence, nothing, no government. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens there just happens and life continues. So one of the things we are supposed to do, and one of the things I did, and that's why you can tell you have about the animosity, yes. is I made it so public that we, as part of Kenya, that has this, uh, this very serious problem. And the media took, took it up, yeah. and you've really helped us in this. Mm -hmm. That's one of the areas I can appreciate the government. Yeah. And out of the pressure from the ground and the media, we got the government coming in. Okay. Uh, the, the inspector general, our, our former inspector general, helped us open seven new police posts okay. and patrol bases along the, the borderline, where, where we have this issue. Seven mm -hmm. new at an interval of uh, around 15 kilometers each. And I put in money through CDF and built all these police posts. So we built the 70 police posts. We, we equipped it with, the, we, we gave the pol police some money to do their communication equipment because yeah. there's no network coverage. Where you, you know this over over. So where somebody in the middle of nowhere, no network coverage, can cope with the police headquarters through the police connectivity yeah. frequency. Mm -hmm. So we equipped that. And now at least there was some essence of uh, police around the borderline. Yeah. Then we went ahead and identified why has this thing been so, as in nothing can do about it. Right. Well, where is the cancer coming from? Which is a cancerous cell? So we, we, we noticed that um, when uh, Said Barre was toppled, 
some of his guys, you know, mm -hmm. came into what we call the Savo East Game Reserve, okay. which is a government game reserve, 40 kilometers square of land right. uh, and settled. And they settled there. They built schools, they built towns, and uh, they, they are from Garissa, others are from Somalia. Mm -hmm. They are armed, every equipment, yeah? Those, those uh, big, big, big guns, you know, the machine guns, you know, the ones with the, with the chains, yeah. uh, uh, feeling the, the, the rifle, the rifle. With, with bullets. And uh, so the police could not dare go there. So we, we, we came to the Minister of Interior and uh, pointed out the old spots. Okay. I flew there with my committee. I got into the Committee of Administration and National Security. I have the flu there with our mm -hmm. chair, the Honorable Koinange of Kiamba, and the county commissioner, county commander by then. Mm -hmm. And we identified four hotspots. Yeah. Then uh, the inspector general and uh, the, dire the director general of the uh, DCI right. flew there. Okay. And they, they also affirmed to what we had told them. Then the police, the, the minister of interior brought up a policy of uh, the, the in, uh, to address this challenge. And the thing was, all those illegal villages okay. should be demolished. All, right. all the illegal structures, all the illegal schools. Well, these are schools going up to class six. They are not registered. Mm -hmm. Kids are taken to do exams in the registered schools in Tana River. There is a big mosque. There is all the markets and everything. Okay. So they were demolished. Four. We yeah. had uh, all of them demolished. Uh, these these guys were taken back to their areas, and the government took proactive measures to settle them there. Okay. So you find the where the cancer cells, the cancer was originating, was resolved. That has been. Uh, had been um, what do you call it? Uh, removed. Yeah. Now, but we remain with the cells in the blood, the okay. cancer cells in the blood. We have them around now, Kamohandas. That is where now the police posts have come in and. Uh, I appreciate the police, the county, our county commander okay. is trying so hard to push now the, the, the ones who are not settled but going around adding their camo out of our land. All right. But so. one of the good things mm -hmm. that immediately Briefly. I looked into it because I, I thought we need a legal framework to get these guys out of these ones and for good. Oh, okay. And the challenge in his yard is K was occasioned by devolution because mm -hmm. uh, before devolution, the Department of Livestock was under the national government. Yes. After devolution, the Department of Livestock was devolved to the county government. Mm -hmm. The county government has no security equipment, equipment. and yeah. uh, personnel. Right. And f there is uh, a law, I think uh, 346, where for you to move livestock from one district to the other, yes. you need two certificates. Okay. You need a certificate of uh, a permit of movement. Mm -hmm. So you need to move livestock from here to here. You need a, a movement permit. Okay. Then you need a no objection permit. Which is? With, with the, from the district of destination, as in where you are taking the livestock. Okay. But now that is saying Make to it brief, Mushimo, so we can take a short break. Cool. Uh -huh. Oh, you, okay, well, let's take a short break and then oh, we'll come I back, finish. wind up on that. Cool. Okay. Welcome back to the broadcast. Uh, still with me is Honorable Mari Nimrud, who's a member of Parliament Kitui East, and we discuss development in Kitui counties, a bit of BBI and Ukambani politics at large. Before we went for break, of course, we were pondering on the aspect of security or addressing insecurity, and he's mentioned a couple of points. I allow him, again, the chance to expound and wind up on that particular one for the benefit of Victor Kiplagat, who argues that we would have allowed you to finish the point before we go for break and then we come to react to some of the questions actually that i had set and your constituents are equally watching and asking thank you linda mm -hmm. you know linda i wish we were down there with you because yes. uh, this uh, this is an area you would also want to appreciate physically on yeah. the things on the ground mm -hmm. uh, we managed to do 90 percent on the operations on the ground mm -hmm. where we managed to push the the, the camo orders off our farmlands for the first time in the last one year, uh, our mothers have been in position to, to farm without these uh, camels uh, getting to their chambers and destroying their, their, mm -hmm. their food, basically. Now, I, I took up the matter to provide a legal framework. I took up the matter into parliament. Yes. I did a bill, the Livestock Movement Bill 
of uh, 2019, is the, the speaker okayed it. Then it was sent to the um, our, our our legal committees, yeah. and uh, they split it into three bills, where one bill is working on uh, that is to change the penal code. That is where about punishment of somebody who is doing contrary mm -hmm. to what the other bills are, are, are trying to enact. Then the other thing is about uh, livestock disease control. Uh, the other bill now is about movement of the livestock and livestock products, yes. produce basically. Mm -hmm. And that they've already been approved by the speaker. They are now bills in the parliament, right. now being sent to the relevant committees where we, uh, we, we push these bills through to become law. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we will, basically what I've done through the bills is to incorporate the national government into authorizing movement yes. of mm -hmm. livestock and li livestock product. Okay. You see, before, it's only the county director of health or veterinary services oh, who right. would sign a permit for camels from Garissa to come into Kitui. Okay, so. And the, the, the county government has no capacity to go and patrol in the rural villages to see whether all the livestock has been uh, okayed. Mm -hmm. So we brought in the chief. We are saying a chief has to sign for the no objection permit for, for, for livestock from another area to come to his location. Okay. And also for movement from his location. All right. So that will help the national government in, in patrolling and containing the menace. All right. that, that, then we've also uh, defined very strict measures, punishment, mm -hmm. yes. to, to this. For when, when, the when you go a control to that, okay. when you are, your livestock has been caught in a sub in a location and you've no no objection permit mm -hmm. very very strict, strict punishment all permit. right let's drop that one at least there's progress that is notable um let's talk bbi briefly before we talk matters what and all that and um there are a couple of questions coming in first of course jacob mutinda who asks whether you have addressed the problem of unemployment in kitui east i think it's a bit we have also touched on that and the effect of electricity in you know a way mm. that is not allowing the youth to take advantage of job opportunities that will be there or you know creativity jacob mutinda once again asks uh why is moshimiwa opposed to the bbi while other Ukambani MPs are in the BBI train. And of course, in regards to the same, uh, this is also one thing that I had touched on on Mata's BBI. And Caxton Watia argues that a BBI did not give Kitui an extra constituency. What's your take on that Mushimiwa? Machakos gets three, Makweni gets two, Kitui zero. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't, you want me to go to comment? First of all, I go to the question. Let me uh, say to the something. questions, actually, let's address BBI yeah. at large because of time. Let me go generally about this BBI thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda, for this for an opportunity to talk about the BBI thing with my people and yes. Kenya at large. We have a problem. You know, at this point, we, we can't uh, talk of how the BBI was conceived. We, we are past that. Yeah. But now we are talking about the contents, the content, the that stakes in the BBI, yeah. and the direct benefits to the Kenyans and also the process where Kenyans will be involved in uh, voting for or against, or against mm -hmm. the, the proposals in the BI, BBI. So the reason is in, I have reasons at three levels. At the national level, we have the national issues. We, we were first talking about the IBC where the big parties would uh, appoint commissioners. That has been solved where we, we went to the courts, where we had this ombudsman thing, mm -hmm. the president appointing an ombudsman to an independent judiciary. Yeah. That could not have, so I also, but that has been changed. Now we have a few issues with the, the legislature. legislature. You, you are talking of uh, adding members of parliament from 290 mm -hmm. to 600. Yes. Double, 290 to 600. Mm -hmm. And in this addition, a quarter of those being actually half of the ones being handed will be through nominations. Mm -hmm. They will be not in parliament to represent any Kenyan. No Kenyan will have elected them. They will only be appointed by a few uh, party leaders. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons we are saying we need consensus around that. Mm -hmm. As in why would we talk of uh, proactive measure uh, in appointing women to the National Assembly instead of and also, at the same time, removing the women reps. Yeah. You know, women, we have 47 women reps in the National Assembly. 
and they've been elected directly by the Kenyans, Linda. Mm. But now we are talking of removing these 47 women reps, taking them to the Senate uh, to be a, a second senator or something, then the government going ahead to nominate other women to, to the assembly. Mm -hmm. So we are saying instead of uh, actually subjecting women to appointments, let's subject women to election. Let's let women compete. Because mm -hmm. you find somebody uh, nominating their girlfriend and leave out <laughs> a, a very good legislator okay. out there. Okay. So that's one of the reasons at the mm -hmm. national level. Or, at the county level, mm -hmm. we have, I told you, you have reason at three levels. Yes. At the county level, we've seen the BBI has created new constituencies. Mm -hmm. Kitui deserves two new constituencies, Which and we've gotten a zero. Okay. And uh, for every sake, how do we go ahead and discuss and pass this document when we don't have a new constituency? Mm -hmm. And from the formula they had used, and also for political reasons, as it has applied to other counties, counties yeah. they, they've received extra constituencies. Then the other reason was about Mwengi County. Mm -hmm. The 2010 constitution created 47 counties based on the existing districts by then. Yes. Every district in 2010, every existing district in 2010 was meant a county. Mwingi was an existing district by then, but it was not meant a county. Mm -hmm. Then the only formula you can create a new county it's is through a referendum. Process, yes. And now we have an opportunity for a referendum. Which has not why, been fronted. Why not create the Mwingi County now? Okay. Why wait mm -hmm. for another referendum? And uh, this is not something that is falling from heaven. It's something which has been done by Kenyans. Have, have you engaged yeah. the likes of Kalonzo Musioka who hail from there? It's not uh, about extensively to push and uh, to help. It's push not for about that. engaging Linda. Yes, we had the task force which was taking proposals yeah. from Mwananchi. Do you suppose? And we gave our proposals. Okay. At the grassroots level in Kitui County, mm -hmm. Kifuza Kibwana represented us with our actually read the memorandum from the whole of Ukambani, mm -hmm. and all these things were in the that. Then it came to KICC. We took these proposals there. And none has been incorporated. Uh, incorporated. Okay. So for Emily say, how do we, do we pass it when it's like that? Uh, do you so instead of going ahead and oppose, yes. that's why we are saying, let's get these uh, our, our proposals incorporated before the bill is brought for, for voting. Why, why? We are not talking of uh, somebody bring their land to Kitri to give us an extra constituency. We are talking just yes, subdividing our land for that? an extra constituency. It's mm -hmm. too simple. Okay. It has been done elsewhere. We have 70 new constituencies. We are only asking for two. Mm -hmm. That is not too much. Right. Then, let's go to my constituency, Kitri East. We are, you've heard of the Moi Basin, mm -hmm. the, the, the Moi Coal Basin. Basin. Yeah. It is three quarters in my constituency. Right. And uh, this coal mining has been outlawed around the country, and around the world. Okay. Coal mining has been outlawed around the world because of two reasons. Okay. Is uh, is hazardous uh, environmentally, mm -hmm. and also according to the Geneva Convention, it has an element of uh, international crime. Mm -hmm. The governor is pushing for the same for the mining process as opposed. Because it involves I mean, yeah. It involves mass movement of people. Yes. You know, for coal to be mined, yeah, anything, fifteen kilometers around this area has to move. Okay. Because of the environmental issues. The coal deposits are within two sub-counties in Kitui East. For coal to be mined, it means people within those two sub-counties have, have to, to be, be moved. Yeah. That, that is actually against the Geneva laws. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that is a, a crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. How can you move people from for two sub counties. What if they are compensated? And of course, this is one of the things that would be, you know, um, an advantage to matters industrialization, an advantage to you know mining, as you rightfully put it. And we take advantage of the same. That's the reason, the world all over has at load yes. coal mining. Okay. Yeah. So why are we thinking of uh, making it illegal in our country? Mm -hmm. So as Kitui East, we had also pushed for mm -hmm. uh, prohibiting or. Yes making it illegal for to mine thing. coal in Kenya, the way South Africa did it, mm -hmm. the way Turkey has done it, mm -hmm. all over the world. This so that what? this may not happen. You know, we may get rogue leaders later yes. in this in Kenya, a rogue president, a rogue governor, and they evict all these people, mm -hmm. and uh, they subject us to these environmental issues. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why we want to embed it in law. Do, do you that think Nilu is wrong in the pushing of the same? And what does it then mean for the, uh, you know, for the relationship, of course, uh, between you, the executive, the members of county assembly that is in Kitui County? And what does it mean for development of the same? Saying Gilu is uh, saying she's been fronting for the for yes. Yeah. Saying Gilu is rogue is being kind to her. Oh, she's more than rogue. Okay, yes, she's the second or devil. How can you think of moving people from so sub counties, people who've elected you? These are people who are looking for. We have a new college now, mm -hmm. university. Yeah. We are pushing for the KMTC. We have tarmac now going to our place. We have water getting to our towns. Mm -hmm. We have new sub county headquarters. Millions of shillings by the government. Our people are enjoying these services. Then you want to move, because to move these people to areas where they will be comfortable, yeah. it means you move them to virgin land. All right. Somewhere where there's no life. Okay. Then we begin zero. Fresh. And it means our livelihood. You know how people uh, survive on uh, livestock? Then you talk of giving us apartments to go and live on apartments. Unfortunately, my, my, our, we, we, we live on uh, our environment is informed by, by livestock, yes. beehives. Will I carry my beehives to on top of the apartment? Certainly Will not. My, my uncle carries goats and cows on top of an apartment? Certainly so not. So we, we can't go there. Mm -hmm. yes, we can't think about it. Yes, yeah. uh, time is not on our side. So it's a conversation that we'll keep having. I hope you will accept my invitation again. Yeah, but sure. lastly, in... 30 seconds or a minute or so, your political plans, I mean, that then would mean whether indeed, or will tell us whether indeed you will be in existence after 2022 to keep pushing for the interests of your people. One of the things I told you is that I, come, I came on the backdrop of, on the backdrop of liberating our people. Yes. We had very important fundamental services yes. uh, which were not there in our country. Yeah. We never had a law court in the Kitui East. Now we have a local gazette at the center of Kitui East in Zombe. We never had a CDF office in Kitui East. Mm -hmm. People who wanted these services would be, follow the member of parliament around. Yeah. Now we have an office at Zombe, which is the center. We never had an IBC office. As in, if you want to get an, uh, a voter's card, if our kids are being employed to, to for the IBC jobs, they have to go around looking for the IBC yeah. uh, RAO. Okay. Now we have this in existence. Right. We never had an institution of higher learning in Kitri East. Mm -hmm. Now we have one. These are the things I was looking at bring to my people. And you still About, are looking forward to address that. And we have Let's uh, I've already addressed that. Yes. That's already to, within. To, to extend it and make it even better. We have this we had this uh, insecurity issue which had come along since independence. Yes. It is now past us. Because we have, uh, it's already been acted on the ground. Uh, we are pushing it in Parliament yes. to be law. Let's wind up, Mushimia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, a, a liberator is not a leader. If you want to liberate people, you, you, basically you, you lack, you don't want to sit on people. You know, okay. most of these leaders are people who will be called Mdozi, Mukubwa, sitting on people. Mm -hmm. That's Nimrod, not Nimrod. Okay. Mine is what my people don't have, I bring. Mine is... That which is oppressing my people, I pull Let's it wind out. Up. Uh -huh. And uh, that's where we come in. In Kikamba, we call it Kusaza. Okay, so <laughs> in this case, in this case, Moshimiwa, because time is extremely out of my side because we're headed to do news. So, you uh, still about, on members uh, of parliament, you're going to be a member of parliament or governor? Or? No, I want to go for the member of parliament uh -huh. to grow a bit. You know, yeah, the governor okay. is a bit higher. <laughs> All right, whoa, okay, honorable. We need to get Bye, stronger neighbor. for that. I'm trying to, to get. <laughs> Together the muscle. Together the muscle together. Thank you and so much. And I will, much. definitely. All I right. will one day. This is yeah. indeed a man to watch. Thank you so much, Honorable by Nimrud. We will have more sessions of this. We expound some more on what is happening in Kitui East. But as of that, we say a Santi Santi.